Hi, Eric Schoenfeld here with John Biggs coming in from Las Vegas. Welcome to Fly or Die. Today we're going to talk about Windows 8. So Windows Microsoft 8. just showed Windows 8 for the first time and it's a radical departure from anything they've done since at least Windows 95, I think. Sure. Uh, what, what, what's your initial reaction? So this is a, a complete revamp of the user interface. It's a touch-based user face. You've got uh, you've got tiles instead of icons, and these tiles act as like mini applications uh, that surface data, real-time data, notifications, mm -hmm. little uh, little things to spur you to launch the application. I think um, sure. this, is, this is based all on uh, on Windows Phone Seven, the brand new Windows Phone mm -hmm. version. The UI is designed for touch screens mostly. Uh, you have bezel activities where you slide things over. Uh, but underneath it all, or actually available to you, is also the old uh, old Windows Vista XP stuff. Uh, Windows 7 can actually load up in one of these little tiles. Right, so is it just a shell, or is it really a, a new operating system? The way that they're describing it is that you have, for the vast majority of activities, you're going to be using this new UI. But when you need it, it's similar to the old ways, the Rosetta and all these other things that you had in, uh, in OS X and Windows, you basically have backwards compatibility for older apps. But can you really have it both ways? Right? I mean, look at what Apple's done. Apple has basically separated their operating systems. They have iOS for iPad and iPhone, and they have OS X for uh, desktops and Macs and laptops, right? And those two are, are different operating systems that, that are for different devices and different purposes. Uh, you know, the argument here against Microsoft is that uh, they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Absolutely. I mean, my, my issue with this, and this is why I'm, I'm kind of down on this, at least this alpha, is that you're always, you're always going to dump back into the old Windows. This, isn't, this isn't, hasn't changed anything. The, what needs to happen is basically Microsoft knows that it needs a touch interface. I'm not sure sticking a pretty face on top of old Windows is the way to do it. Right. On the other hand, though, there is an argument to be said for having a transition from what people have been used to the past 15 years to this new world of touch computing. Mm -hmm. And I got to give Microsoft a lot of credit for sort of moving boldly into this new world. Um, you know, it's classic embrace and extend strategy for Microsoft. Uh, and I, I just want to give a counter argument to the whole, you know, desktop should have one OS and tablet should have another OS. I mean, if you look at what Apple itself is doing, you already see signs of OS X and Lion and uh, iOS uh, starting to, to converge or at least overlap. And I think we're going to see more and more overlap in the future. So isn't Microsoft just getting ahead of the curve here for a product that's not going to be out until 2012 and the earliest, maybe 2013? I think they're getting ahead of the curve. I also worry that IT guys aren't going to want to in, in, involve touch touch UIs into their uh, into the systems that they roll out. Well, you probably don't want, want the IT guys touching too much stuff anyway. Yeah, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't want to have to clean a lot of screens. So in terms of uh, in terms of that, I worry that it's not it's a little too much for the average business consumer. And uh, what do you think about? You know, there's some other features I think are pretty cool. Uh, you know, you've got this fast switching in between apps that are uh, that are running live, which is very much, I think that's a feature of Phone Seven, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and other other mobile operating systems. And then also, uh, there it, it supports HTML5 and JavaScript apps. So the types of apps that people are are already creating for the web, uh, it, it seems to me that that the Windows 8 apps will have a look and feel that's similar to to web apps. And then so that's another sort of area of convergence that uh, you know, I think it's smart for Microsoft to, to get in front of there and not require you know, uh, people to use older uh, development tools. Yeah, again, I mean, the problem is you dump back into old Windows uh, a little too often for my taste. So fly or die on Windows 8? In this alpha mode, I'm giving it a die. Uh, I, just didn't, I just didn't see this as the future for general purpose, general business user Windows. So, I, you know, of course, this is vaporware, so who knows if any of this is going to, uh, you know, make it through uh, to the final product. But from what they showed, I don't see any other way that they can transition from the icon based, uh, you know, operating system to touch 
Um, it's easy for you know pundits like us to say that they should just throw out the old system and, and start from scratch with new, but you know there's a lot of people who they're going to have to drag through this transition and giving them that fallback I think is going to be a key. So I'm not going to give them a die just based on that. Uh, and you know if they make the touch part more appealing and people start using it more and more, then the other parts of the UI will just sort of fall away naturally. So I'm going to give it a fly just because I like to encourage them. All right. So that's uh, our episode for this week. Join us next week when we'll have a few more products for Fly or Die.